Hello all, Harlan Guthrie here, creator, producer, voice actor, but basically I do everything behind the scenes for Malevolent. If you've listened to the episode before this, the Q&A I did with my friend Ren, then you should be no stranger to my, let's say, normal speaking voice. However, this is a little different than the Q&A. The first part of season five drops right here on this feed on May 1st. But in the meantime, I wanted to do something different. Something you haven't heard on here before. This isn't a new project or a plea for Patreon support, though that's always helpful. No, this is something special. I often get asked what shows beyond this one I would recommend. And while this isn't going to be a common occurrence, in fact, this is possibly the only time I'm going to do this, I wanted to give you a taste of a show that I firmly believe is absolutely fantastic. Some would say in a class of its own, that some being me. The White Vault is a horror audio drama by my friends Travis and K.A. exploring the far reaches of the world's horrors. Not only does the show feature a ton of friends I've made over the last few years, but it rivals few others in its writing, sound design, and sheer unbridled terror, featured in nearly each and every episode. It's so good, in fact, that I'm hoping you'll listen along with me right now to the first episode. So sit back, relax, and prepare to be transported. Afterwards, make sure you check them out at thewhitevault.com or subscribe wherever you do for podcasts. There are so many moments of the show that you do not want to miss out on. Otherwise, see you all May 1st. Friends. <laughs> Several days ago, I came into the full collection of documents and recordings that I'll be presenting here. Although many of the recordings and documents are dated, some lack explanation for where they fit into the constructed timeline. Additionally, due to the multiple viewpoints present, I've taken it upon myself to edit and sort documents or recordings into appropriate points in the hope of presenting a fuller picture. This report includes the records of Dr. Rosa De La Torre, Walter Heath, Graeme Kasner, Dr. Karina Schumacher-Weiss and Jonas Thorninson during an expedition in Svalbard. The White Vault This recording comes from the phone of Dr. Schumacher Weiss. Hey Mama, ich bin's. Ich soll für eine Firma, für die ich arbeite, für ein paar Wochen. Hey Mama, it's me. One of the companies I work for needs me to go on a trip out to Svalbard for a few weeks. Well, more accurately, I hope to work for them. Apparently, they received a signal from one of their outposts that may indicate some rather interesting finds. Seeing as how they've been looking to expand, I'm hoping this job will solidify in a good job for me within their geological team. Oh, my stop is coming up, Mama. I'm sorry I will miss Papa's birthday, but I ordered a gift for him and shipped it to you. Please wrap it up and give it to him at the party, okay? After all this time in this job market, I cannot afford to pass up this opportunity. I spoke with Rolf yesterday about this. He was obviously upset, but he supported my choice to take this job. If I impressed them, I would not have to live permanently on Svalbard, as most of their geological surveys take place during the summer months. It would be rough, but the payment would certainly help us with our house payments. <sighs> Honestly, Rolf is not the best at keeping secrets. I found a ring when I was cleaning. Mama, I think he will propose when I get back. Before spring, for certain. If I don't message you again, be well. I love you and I'll see you later. Pass my love on to Papa, okay? Tschüss! Dated slightly before Dr. Schumacher Weiss's recording, Mr. Walter Heath of Reading, UK, had written in his personal journal a collection of emails he sends to himself in the folder labelled Documentation. I got a job. Serendipitous timing. My lease is up on the flat soon and the company says the job will take a little less than a month between travels, preparations and weather conditions. I don't own too many possessions, especially after the divorce, so that's not going to be a problem. I have a few weeks to sell some things on Gumtree. I know a friend who will give me a few pounds for my old TV. 
And Molly took the tufts in the separation anyway. Yep. Space between this place and me would seem like a certified vacation, were it not in the ass and frigid wastes of Svalbard. So yes, the job is in Svalbard, land of polar bears and the midnight sun. Except at this time of year, I'll be lucky to see any sun at all. <laughs> it's not as though I have a tanned complexion to maintain. I'd been sending out feelers for a job for months now, but I'd not even applied for their company. Seja Group is some independent mining contractor out of Iceland, Norway, and Sweden. Apparently, they're hiring on short notice due to many of their general contractors occupied on winter jobs elsewhere, since apparently most people don't want to head to the dark, cold, endless night of a hungry bear-ridden glacier. <laughs> I, on the other hand, have little less to do than pack up and head out. When I spoke with them on the phone, I was told I was required because of reports of an equipment malfunction. They're sending a team to an outpost to address the issue. The company is unsure what caused the signal they received, but it's more expensive to mount multiple expeditions than to send a team, including myself, out to fix or assess the transmitter. I heard rovers may be involved. And the pay is fantastic. I'll be back in Reading at... No. No, I'll find somewhere else to let a new flat. After all this is over, there will be no need to come back here. No other documents pertaining to their work with the Seizure Group were found before the arrival of the team at the Seizure Group meeting station on Svalbard in Neolasen. No, uh, sorry to disappoint. I'm Walter Heath, the repair technician and IT specialist. Sorry, Mr. Heath. I'm Jonas Thorisson. But, but please call me Jonas. I'm the Seizure Group's project representative for this expedition. I hope your travels were not too difficult. Everything was quite fine. But, uh, my flight from Longyearbyen experienced some fairly frightening turbulence, so... Uh, I hope you don't mind, but I'm recording this. Uh, this is quite the adventure into the Dark North. Not at all, please. Though I don't think my voice will lend to fair listening. The flight turbulence, that is to be expected during this time of winter. It is uncommon to have flights this time of year for exactly such a reason. There's coffee on the pot if you would like some. Oh, yes, please. I think my fingers are stuck in place. After a bout at the university, I promised myself I would never head further north than Aberdeen. <laughs> How things change. Is this the seizure room? Yes, but please come in. The heat will get out. I'm Jonas Thorison. You must be Dr. Delatore. Yes, nice to meet you, uh, Mr. Donnenson. <laughs> Jonas will be fine. Please, come in, doctor. Pour yourself a cup of coffee. We're waiting on others. Thank you, Jonas. And Rosa will be fine. Are you also on the expedition? Uh, yes. Hello. Hi. I'm Walter Heath, the repair technician and IT specialist. And you, uh, Dr. Delator, are you uh, a geologist? Volcanologist? I, I don't know what seizure group would need out there beside me in a warm overcoat. Rosa, please. And I am a medical doctor. I've worked on Svalbard for companies before. I'm there to make sure you and the others on the expedition come back in good health, Mr. Heath. Uh, Walter is fine. Jonas, are you on the expedition? Yes, I'm the Seizure Group's project representative. And that entails... I report back on the status of outpost stations and assess the abilities of potential hires. So you are the man to impress. <laughs> Hello? We're looking for the Seizure Group. Yes, come in. You must be Dr. Schumann Weiss and Mr. Kastner. Hello. Mr. Kastner and Dr. Schumann Weiss. This is Dr. Rosa Della Torre and Mr. Walter Heath. I am Jonas Thorison, the representative for CETIA. Now that we're all here, I would like to begin the short presentation regarding our goal at Outpost Freestead. Mr. Thorison, <gasps> I see coffee. Is there coffee? Please call me Jonas. And my apologies, there's coffee over there. Uh, please make yourself comfortable while I set up the presentation. Are you recording? Uh, yes, it's for my travel logs. Uh, does it bother you? No. And what do you contribute to our little expedition, Mr. Kasner? 
Have you ever been to Svalbard before, Mr. Heath? Walter is fine, and uh, no, I've never been this far north before at all. Not many people have. I'm here to make sure you don't break down and get stuck out atop a glacier in negative 17 degrees, or get stalked by a polar bear when you go out to repair whatever it is you all need to fix. Well, it is calming to know the company has thought so much about our safety. Hello, everyone. As the representative of CJ Group, I would like to thank you for accepting the offered position for the examination and repair expedition out to Outpost Freestead. CJ Group knows it was a short notice, but we are appreciative and hope you find yourself in the position to aid CJ further in the future. Several weeks ago, a transmission from Outpost Freestead was received at CJ Group's primary receiving station here in Nialisa. While we mostly operate mining contracts around Svalbard, CJ Group is also an established surveyor here and across multiple Scandinavian countries. Uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm not sure if I got this right. Uh, d- I think I heard something about polar bears? They must be hibernating about now. Uh, polar bears do not hibernate. That answers my question. We have specialized equipment at several outposts, including Freestead, that receive input signals from several research rovers, both belonging to Citra Group and multiple other organizations who prefer to use our network than set up their own. The signal we recently received from the station was unintelligible, but more importantly, that outpost is only meant to receive and aggregate data for collection in the summer, not send messages or signals unless a malfunction or an emergency has taken place. We cannot tell what it was based on the single message received. Due to this, Citra Group has decided to send out this team to find the reason for the signal. Wait, uh, hold on. I-, I was told that my expertise would be needed? Uh, this sounds more like some lost tourist stumbling across a refuge from the winter cold. <laughs> and that very well might be. But the information collected by those rovers is paramount to several geological studies being undertaken here, for several reasons across several projects. Your past work with the advancements of the use of GPR and its mining applications, as well as your recent work in Norway regarding volcanic activity, has been taken into account by our primary managers. I'm not a scientific man myself, so I apologize if I've misrepresented your work. So I am to examine the collected data, right? I will at least require information regarding what data has been collected and what for. Not exactly. Because of the rovers, we utilize an algorithm that takes incoming geological data to inform us of any important changes to Swalbard itself. For both glacier and seismic activity can at any point endanger the life of miners on the island. If the program detects too many outliers, it can be considered an emergency. I will have some papers available for you tomorrow when we depart. Uh, I apologize for the short notice. Being it is the winter months, many simple amenities are not fully stocked. Print drink, for example. Ah, thank you. Also, I do not see why this could not have been messaged to me earlier. Now that we understand Dr. Schumacher-Weiss's role, Mr. Heath, or Walter, will be required to inspect and repair the transmitter for any possible damage. While Citigroup Group is uncertain for the reason for the signal, the cost of sending two groups at separate times is too high. One of you may be redundant, but you will be paid nonetheless. Dr. Della Torre and Mr. Kastner are assigned to get you there and back safely. I will be accompanying you in case of any damages or events that require documentation for Citigroup Group records. The next rover is scheduled to transfer information to the outpost three days from now, so we must assure the station's receiver is operational by then. Every instance of lost data cut. This was the point at which Mr. Heath's recorder died. The next available document is an action report from Mr. Kasner following their arrival at Outpost Freestead. We have successfully reached Outpost Freestead. Departure from Nielessen was planned for 0500 with five fully fueled snowmobiles, four of which haul supplies. Due to mechanical difficulties, we did not leave Nielessen until 525. Mr. Heath was a capable driver, contrary to previous concerns. Jonas and Dr. Schumacher Weiss also did well. Dr. Dilatore, Rosa, had uh, several problems with the snowmobile, only one of which warranted addressing. A belt had become shredded and was properly replaced before leaving the vicinity of Nielessand. We traveled approximately 53 kilometers to Outpost Freestead, located just south of the border to Nordvest Spitsberger National Park. We traveled slowly and safely and made it here within two and a half hours. We have been here for some time now, perhaps three hours. The outpost is a bunker. Sija Group obviously invested in these stations. We brought weeks worth of rations with us to assure our safety and comfort, as well as restock the outpost. 
I spent time unloading and stocking the bunker with the goods we brought and covered the snowmobiles for our return trip. The generator was easy to start up, even given the conditions. To the slight disappointment of Dr. De La Torre, there was no injured tourist here upon our arrival. She has since taken to starting the internal appliances. She also helped put away goods in the auxiliary bunker, a few meters from the primary station. She's quite helpful, and, uh, sympathetically. <laughs> no one will accuse me of not keeping thorough notes regarding this expedition. The bunker is operational. I did not understand, Mr. Heath, but apparently something is broken, and it looks like vandalism. It will take some time to repair the damage, but he believes he is capable. Dr. Schumacher Weiss, Karina, I think it is, is upset that there may be little for her to do, but she is finding some of the previously stored data here regarding the geological something of the area to be rather interesting. It looks like a storm is coming. The next recording came from the station's computer. As part of the relay and radio built into the outpost, a recording function is available at all times. Mr. Heath made use of this use promptly. Storm blew in fast. Weather can change very quickly here. It's best not to be caught unaware. I've got it working. What? Uh, the recorder in the computer. Hey. The radio setup here is rather advanced as well. Do you record often, Walter? I like to. Keeps me honest. Enough. I packed a camcorder as well. We are well stocked. Between rations left here from the summer expeditions and the reserves we brought in, we can wait the storm out. I even saw alcohol. Huh. Welcome to the north. I think it is universal. <gasps> what was that? A polar bear. They come in this far from the coast? They can, though it may not be common. Is it safe to work on the equipment? Uh, tomorrow, that is, after the storm dies down. Yes. So you think it'll leave? The bear? Eventually. You seem very sure about this. Don't feel confident in your ability to patch up a bear attack, Doc? Oh, I can. And I think Walter would look all the better with his scars for it. What? Oh, preferably not. It won't come so close. Uh, once out of the populated areas, all groups must carry weapons to further their safety precautions. You will shoot the bear, Mr. Kastner? Well, first I'll shoot around the bear, but if it gets too close, yes. A warning shot will scare them off most of the time. So, how long do you believe the repairs will take you, Walter? The repairs outside? Not too long, a couple of days at most if I can get my hands to stop shaking. I'm more concerned with the internal problems. Is there something broken with the computer? Well, not precisely. While, while it looks like the transmitter-receiver tower outside was manually and <laughs> rather coarsely disconnected, the computer itself, which acts as an interface for the data both incoming and outgoing, has some obviously malicious coding. A computer error? No. Coding is difficult. It was intentional. So, a virus? Maybe. I'll be examining it later after I fix the physical damage. Any idea what it does? I think it's what sent out the message. So someone intentionally damaged City Group property and altered some computer thing? Seemingly so. Thank you. This will make a difference regarding insurance claims. Uh, please document the evidence you need to help prove this to be true. It will be valuable for my work. So I saw something that looked like a bottle of cheap tequila earlier. That was a bottle of Aquavit. Still cheap, though. Until the storm settles down, I don't see much work happening. What are you looking for, Yunus? Glasses. The following letter was taken from the notepad of Dr. De La Torre, though the page had been torn out. Her handwriting, though legible, is disordered and unpunctuated. Given the content of the letter, I believe she was intoxicated.
Akkarid is a disgusting drink. It burns like vodka, but tastes like something you would expect from a people who enjoy pickled fishes. I tend to swell but enough to know it will rear its ugly head at some point or another. I miss chiles and nogada, mama's mole tamales. I'd fight for fresh fruits. Still, deal alcohol, pickled fishes, and repugnant cheese endure, which, as it turns out, was one of the jarred foodstuffs we were lucky enough to open tonight. Pickled fish, a tin of mashed potatoes the size of my head, and another of cut carrots, not what I would have hoped for, but what I had expected. Jonas poured ample drink for us all. Walter was a surprisingly heavy drinker until he fell asleep at the computer desk. Karina as well. I could not stand the taste of it. Some kind of potato thing it is. Karina sipped it as the Graham. Karina is a talker when drunk. Apparently she was some geology prodigy who lost some big job. But she won't stop going on about a soon-to-be fiancé back home. It is difficult to understand her when she starts speaking in a jumble of English and German. And she snores. Jonas showed us pictures of his kids. Twin girls. Blondest hair I've ever seen. Tiny, traditional Icelandic sweaters. Cute. Graham and I were up late. Are up late. It's interesting. Lots of stories from travels across the north. I think he liked tequila. Shit, it's late. As far as I could discern, no other documentation or recordings were taken during the first day of the expedition. This completes the first collection of information regarding the repair team at Outpost Freestead. The White Vault, 